welcome back to my team career mode. I always find it a period bit funny when reliability upgrades fail. Um, but we had them couple of failures last time with the Monaco Grand Prix. We actually finished the race for the first time in this career mode, which is fun. Um, but Sergio Perez took the win from Leclerc. It was very close cool on the pit exit between them to the beginning of lap 12 or something like that. When they pitted. If Perez's pit stop had been like a tenth slower, then Leclerc would have won the race. Um, but like I said, he got his highest finish in his home race. Um, his previous highest was third in, in season two. And that's where I finished this season. Not happy about it. I could have won had I not been stupid about the, the freaking orange, about the gearbox. And had I, well, had the back markers not kind of been a bit in the way, uh, maybe had I got past Gasly sooner, I could have won. I don't know. Um, had George Russell gone for a slightly different strategy, maybe. And, you know, gone a bit longer than gone into the softs and not the hards. We started on the mediums. But we redo them. Uh, th that's just... It's just typical shoulda, woulda, coulda stuff, you know, that you always have after a race that doesn't that hasn't quite gone to plan. You always have those uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda call thoughts and comments about the race, but you live and you learn, can't do anything about it. We just got to, have to move on and do them up, liability upgrades coming in, MGUK, Energy Store, that kind of stuff. And move on to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix weekend. I absolutely love this track. It is one of my favorite favorites. I love Baku so, so, so much. It's such a fun drive to drive. Um, I would say drama tends to unfold. I don't always have too much drama. Okay, no, there was a lot of drama in season one, I remember, where it was like, what was it? It was Verstappen, Sainz, Hamilton, and Norris cho decided to go four wide in the turn one in front of me. That didn't end well. Verstappen was out the race, and you can see I still have my Monaco helmet in. I forgot to change my helmet out before doing this race, so whoopsie daisy with still the Monaco helmet in. It's basically still just the same design, but the base is white sparkly instead of black carbon fiber effect. That's what the black is, it's a carbon fiber effect pattern I found for Photoshop. It's very close to the wall there in the castle section, but I didn't bin it. I didn't bin it there. Thankfully, as we were extending the track limits there, we're going quickest of all in the middle sector. I think we're quickest of all in the far sector as well. Um, and it does look a bit dull, but it, it isn't meant to rain the entire weekend, which I'm very thankful of. This is a bit of a nightmare track when it's in the wheat. This track is, this in Singapore are some of the worst tracks in the wheat. Because it, they're so fucking slippery, but Leclerc goes quickest by almost six tenths of a second. Jesus, what is this? Freaking Q3 in Belgium in 2019? He had pole by like seven and a half tenths to his teammate. It's like miles ahead of the Mercedes, miles ahead of Seb Vessel, Jesus. Anyway, real life F1 aside, um, let's continue on to Q2, going for a serious attempt on the mediums here. Oh, happy new year, by the way. When this goes up, it will officially be 2022. It's currently still 2021, and it is a about uh, 25 to 4 in the afternoon when I'm doing this commentary on New Year's Eve. And hopefully, for the first time in a while, this video should actually be up on time. Uh, but anyway, on this hot lap in Q2 here, on the medium tires, start on the mediums would actually give us quite a big advantage. And we've got George Russell on a lap just ahead of us. Thankfully, well, first of all, we're going quickest of all in the first sector. But thankfully, he's just far enough ahead that come the big long back straight, we can get a good enough... We can get a slipstream off of him, but good. also, luckily, he shouldn't disturb us too much in terms of downforce as we make our way through the castle section. Always feels a bit tight as we're running the curbs as much as we possibly can here. Just to try and get as much lap time as is humanly possible out of this lap. Because I know Charles is going to be strong for one. Um, I'm hoping we can just do this one lap as well, which is why I'm trying to get as much lap time as possible. Out we've gone purple through the middle sector, a bit wide, just commit two hits through turn 16. Now 17, 18, 19, 20, which aren't really corners in the dry. We've got George Russell just ahead of us, as I said. He can give us a brilliant slipstream here down this straight, so we can gain a bit more lap time. We, we get a better slipstream if we're closer to him, but we're still getting the slipstream nonetheless, and we'll come across Lingo quickest overall with a 37 flat. 
in terms of timings. And, uh, well, Leclerc does go quicker. Also on the mediums, Perez is trying the mediums. Gasly and Verstappen are trying the medium strats. As is Sebastian Vettel. He's had a very poor lap time. The first sector in particular, he must have done a mistake in the first sector, I think. Um, but he goes again on soft tires. We go through, along with Charles and Perez, on the medium tires. So ourselves, Charles and Checo, all starting on the mediums. Everyone else on the softs. Hamilton out again, predictably. He's making a habit of this, I'm going to be fairly honest. Uh, but we are through both Ferraris, both Red Bulls, both McLaren, Gasly, and um, Verstappen are all through. And now into Q3, we're on our first run here. We've got Gasly, speaking of the Frenchman, just ahead of us on a lap. Again, like George Russell, it's far, far enough away that it won't disturb us, but close enough that we can potentially get a bit of a slipstream off him come the big long main straight. Which is always handy in Baku to get a slipstream. I mean, I remember Q3, FP3, I think it was earlier in the last year, actually. Um, then it was um, 2021, Baku, um, FP3. Hamilton had like a massive slipstream on his quickest lap in FP3. Leclerc had a slipstream from Hamilton on his pole lap in Q3. Perez has gone quicker, speaking of pole laps. Sets provisional pole. Gasly's gonna cross the line and said to time, we're going to cross the line and take provisional pulls of 36.3, 136.388 for our time. Leclerc is, um, I can tell you, 49 one thousandths quicker and still in the garage, actually. He is got, he went 49 one thousandths quicker than us on his quick lap. So we, and I think he's actually still in the garage. I'm not quite sure if he's out on track or not. Because I, I don't think, I think there's some people not going out for a third run, for a second run, which is very, very weird. But we're up by about three and a half tenths or so as we exit the first sector. Still down on what Leclerc can do. He's clearly gone about a tenth quicker through that first sector. And I was ringing pretty much absolutely everything out of that first sector. But anyway, second sector now. It's where I can gain quite a bit by using, by taking every single liberty possible with uh, what I've heard is referred to as the eSports Corner, also known as Turn 15, where you can cut to all hell. I'm on regular corner cutting stringencies, right? But you can cut that corner to all hell. I've heard that corner called the eSports Corner. We're up by about seven, over seven tenths up on Leclerc's time, about six or so tenths up on our, be on our best time, apparently, I think. Either way, we are up massively, probably large amount thanks to my Freaking liberties with track limits at turn 15, which you can do. If it, I hope Cody's do not fix that for the new game, but we come across the line, and I believe that is a purple time of pole position by far by half a second. We take pole, which we will start from this time, unlike Monaco from Leclerc, who joined us on the front row. And yeah, he only did one run. He stayed in the garage. For, he didn't do a second run along with Sainz and the two McLarens. He did a 30, so that's 36, 3, 3, 9. We ended up with a 35, 8, 3, 4. But we're on the front row alongside a teammate. The front row lockout, second row lockout for the two Raid Bulls, who are our, our main rivals and the constructor as well. I say main rivals with a pretty healthy lead. Then we've got Sainz, Verstappen, and everyone else. Let's head to the grid now and see how things shake up for this race. A warm welcome to all of you watching at home to today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix and a race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama. A fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as a pole position would. And remember, in 2017 and 2018, both Lance Stroll and then Sergio Perez took surprise podiums here. With 20 turns and a length of 3.7 miles, Baku City Circuit in the heart of the Azerbaijan capital is a real test of a driver's endurance, patience and precision. 90 degree corners through sector one lead into a tightening uphill sprint as we start to circle around the old city. Then a 1.4 mile chase flat out through sector three towards the finish line. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's discuss Red Bull. We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year and the signs haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. It doesn't look promising for them so far. And if the new regs have hit them as hard as we think, well, I suspect they may need a few late nights at the factory to get back on track. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. It's the owner driver in pole position then, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Perez, 
Carlos Sainz and Verstappen. Bottas, Gasly, Sonoda and Lando Norris. Hamilton, Matsushita, Fernando Alonso and Ocon. Russell, Stroll, Mick Schumacher and Christian Lungard. Mazepin, Latifi, Giovinazzi and Jack Aitken. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head to trackside for today's race. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Cheers, Jeff, kind of the point. I'm kind of aiming for a top one finish. I want to win this race. We're being suggested a 12th stop either way. I don't know what, I don't know can what Jeff is smoking. Um, I fancy doing a one stop. Whether that's a one stop, as much as I'd love to do medium, medium. Um, whether that's a one stop for medium to hard or a one stop for medium to soft, go ballsy like I did last season, which actually caused me a podium in the end by two one hundredths of a second. I forgot about that. That was crazy. Um, I don't know. We'll have to play by ear once we're out there, but it's medium for myself, Charles, Checo, um, Jack Aitken, um, Mick Schumacher, and another driver, George Russell, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't too playing close attention there, but we'll have to see what happens. Five lights are going to be on ahead of us here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. They're out, and we are racing in Baku. It's a great start for us. We get off the line well into turn one. We managed to hold on to the lead. There's Sebastian Vettel going around the outside of his former teammate. And our current teammate is down to third. Sainz is trying to get past Sergio Perez. Sainz on the sauce compound tires. Having a bit of an advantage off the line compared to Perez on the mediums. Uh, the same thing happened to Leclerc and Vettel as uh, Gasly's trying to get past uh, Lando Norris. We're trying to stay ahead, rather, of Lando Norris, rather. Um, as he's down the inside in the turn three, that's going to give Norris the inside for four as he's still sticking with the Alpha Tauri. Yuki Tsunoda's in behind in the other McLaren in P10. Pardon me, as, as Pierre Gasly holds on to eighth place for the time being. And uh, there was a bit of a side by side down the road with uh, George Russell and Lance Stroll, I believe, there. Um, over 16th place as uh, we are leading the Wiz. Oi, 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 that was close in the castle section. To the wall, Sebastian Vettel's in behind us on the soft compound tires, and it's our teammate Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, our former teammate. And there's Sergio Perez fifth, Bottas is seventh, Verstappen is in, Bottas is sixth, sorry, Verstappen seventh, then Gasly eighth, Norris ninth, Sonoda tenth. This is what this moment looked like, by the way, from on board in the castle section. Very, very close to hitting the barrier there, my god. Um, but we've done exactly what we needed to do and get off the line absolutely perfectly well. But we do still hate Sebastian Vettel having a little look there, but not quite going for it. Uh, the main goal would be to see if we can maybe break DRS before it comes in on lap three. That would be absolutely brilliant. Because then we can just kind of run our own race and let the carnage unfold, the inevitable carnage unfold behind. And I might have a better chance of going for that ballsy one-stop from medium to soft like I did last season, but just the other way around. Jeez, that was crazy, but we've got problems here. Sebastian Vettel right on our tail as we head down the main straight. He's pulling to the inside line. It's a drag race in the first corner as we start lap number two. We're going to sail round the outside, pitch him to the inside. He gets a little bit out of shape. That's going to open the door for Leclerc to have a go at him. Down into turn two, can he get the move done? Down the inside on those medium tires and the salt tires, Jude actually still have a bit, a bit of an advantage right now over the mediums. And it shows as Vettel is able to stay ahead of the Monegasque, his uh, former teammate from his Ferrari days. Uh, well, from both of the Ferrari days, because Leclerc was not with Ferrari anymore in this career mode. He probably he might go back there in another, in a later series season, who knows, as uh, George Russell and Jack Aitken are um, going for it through the first sector here. I believe it's uh, Russell trying to get past Aitken because I think he was in P16 and he's going to now be in P15 as Aitken's out of shape. They made a bit of contact, strolls down the inside at turn five. That was a bold move from the Canadian. Jeez, where did that come from? Wow. Um, as Aitken now from 15th, he's down into 17th as I'm getting mixed up with the cameras there. As there is a bit of a gap opened up here, I wonder if Aitken's got picked up a fair bit of wing damage for his contact with George Russell. And confirmation, yes, he has picked up damage. He is into the pit lane on this lap. 
As, um, well, meanwhile, elsewhere, Saints is trying to get past Sergio Perez, or Perez trying to get past Saints. Well, I can't remember whichever way they were. I think it's Saints trying to get past Perez. Verstappen is trying to get past Bossas in the background, meanwhile. Um, as these battles continue on, drag race now, down this main street, the back street, whatever street you want to call it. As uh, Perez stays ahead of Sainz, can Verstappen get ahead of Bottas? Yes, he can. Good Bottas, no one approaches from Pierre Gasly. Where did he come from? In this heat, Verstappen it has opened the door for the Frenchman to dive past the Finn. Jeez, Gasly took the, saw that opportunity and grabbed it. That was a good move from the Frenchman. Good teamwork there from two former teammates from the first half of 2017, 2019 rather, sorry. Um, as we look back ahead to the battle, on the in the upcoming battle for second place here, um, Sebastian Vettel is going to have to defend when they get ruined to the main straight. Well, I say main straight, back straight, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, the the like 2.2 kilometer long main straight. I think it's 2.2 kilometers. I say this like every single season. I swear to God, and I never look it up beforehand. I never think to. Um, but either way, Vettel's gonna have to defend from Leclerc here. How much can he defend though, is the question. We have a quicker car, it has to be said, on paper than Red Bull. Although Vettel has been a bit slippery in a straight line, let's be fair. He's no, the Vettel is no slouch, but neither is Leclerc. It's gonna be a drag race as Leclerc taking the outside line. Down towards turn one, round the outside, no contact main, Leclerc is up now into second place. About four seconds or so back from ourselves, as we have a very easy time of it right now. You know, we've got that good healthy lead, you know, maybe opening up the door for us to maybe have a think about that ballsy one stop. Seconds. They're on old mediums. Their tires are four laps old. We think they've got two stops remaining. The time last lap was a one minute forty point nine. And that just opening up the door for us even more to go for that ballsy one stop of going from medium to soft tires. Because Leclerc, who started on the mediums, is two stopping. Could we? Could we stretch this stint out and go? To like lap 20, pit at the end of lap 20, then go on to the softs to end this race. Could we do it? Well, we're gonna have to find out. As speaking of soft tires, Vettel is in on this lap. The soft tires, it, I don't know. I think they can maybe last a little bit longer than that. I would be perfectly, being perfectly honest, but other people carry on. As um, Vettel, Verstappen, Bottas, uh, Norris are all into the pit lane. Where are these? These guys are gonna filter out right at the back of the. Field. Um, here come the two Haas cars of uh, Mick Schumacher just going through there. Vettel's gonna slot in behind his countryman and ahead of the Russian of uh, Nikita Mansbin as the rest all come out. Gasly was in as well. They all file out at the back of the field here. Um, as uh, meanwhile Vettel trying to get past Schumacher now as they head through the twisty start to this long straight. And Vettel is through, but he might have gone a bit wrong because he went through the detection point ahead of Schumacher. So Schumacher's gonna have the DRS down this straight and he's gonna come back at him down into turn one as there's more people into the pit lane. Alcon has continued on, strangely enough, on the salt compound tires. Vettel down the inside, trying to defend his position from uh, Schumacher. Schumacher's not giving this one up very easily. Pardon me, it must be said. He is absolutely going for it and trying to get this done and get the position back, but he has to yield in the end. He um, well, stays in behind, rather, and Vettel stays ahead. As you can see there, Alcon staying out for another lap. Strange. Um, you know, he's cl clearly making those soft tires last quite a bit longer than, you know, anyone else has. As um, we continue on our way here on lap number... Like we might have an issue. Hang in there. We're attempting to manage it. Eight and of course, we escaped the technical dramas in Monaco, so they're gonna come and strike us in Baku, of course. Ay, 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 ay. Well, this is not what I wanted. Um, we're just gonna have to hope it's nothing serious here. This could throw a real spanner in the wrench 
into our race and the championship if this is anything bad. I hope it's nothing bad, but we'll just continue. We have a severe engine issue. Find a safe space to retire or return to the pits. Are you kidding? I put that turbocharger in last race. That turbocharger is practically new. And it's blown. There goes our turbocharger. There goes the win for us. Leclerc now takes the lead as we are out of the race with a mechanical failure. This could be a spanner in the works for our championship right now. Oh, right now, I say. I mean, we've come back from further last season to win the champion, to be almost win the championship. We'll have a chance at it, rather. Okay, thanks, Baku, for absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Are you kidding me? Of course he won. Of course Leclerc wins. Leclerc wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix then, it seems like. Of course he did. And so ends another Azerbaijan Grand Prix. A fascinating race and a well-deserved victory. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Well, as I said, Char Charles Leclerc wins the Azerbaijan Grand Prix from Sebastian Vettel in second and Sergio Perez in third. Vettel, fight up on the podium. He's getting back up there. You know, he's getting back up there. Could, uh, well, if Vettel stays around for any more seasons, could he fight for a fifth championship with the Red Bull? Who knows? But this does definitely throw a spanner in the works for the moment for our championship. Not ideal at all for our championship fight right now. As um, we now move down to third in the standings, Perez is up to second. We're 39 points down on our teammate. You know, there's still a lot of season left. You know, anything is Formula One. Anything can and will change. In It's Formula One. Anything can happen. In Formula One, anything can happen. And it usually does, in the words of Murray Walker. But no changes in the constructor standings. Only these small changes in the driver standing. Some people moving up and down the order there. Um, as well, Leclerc extends his lead further in the driver's championship. As I said, thanks, Baku, for absolutely F all. Um, we need to win Canada. We need to win Canada with Canada. We also have France coming up. Seasons one through three, I won France. As long as we can out-qualify that man there, Leclerc, then we should have a pretty good chance in France. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I don't know, out qualify him or hope he starts on soft tires or goes on the two stops starting on mediums. But either way, gonna end it here. So for new, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.